Hi all, it's Piotr. Today I will do a quick movie about X-Men by Chris Claremont, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri. It's second edition, first printing. It was a gift from my friends at work. Here is what it contains. As you can see, inside we have Uncanny X-Men 244 to 169, X-Men Annual 13 and Classic X-Men 39. If you are wondering if there is a, any difference between second edition this one from 2020 and first printing from 2011 I would say practically none only if you can see the difference in the size of the omnibus and Wolverine on new one is in a little bit different costume, color of the costume. So, new one is, is not so big because of the paper, of course. Great that my friends decided for this cover because I had the, the first printing, I had this one. It's really cool, but this one looks amazing. It's great to have such friends that can give you that kind of gift. If you are wondering if there is an eye, yes, there is an eye, of course. We can take the task jacket. It's in tradition of the new omnibuses, how Marvel is doing them right now. Some people are not familiar with this period. I really like this because it's Australian Outback period. It's the end of this time period, you can say. It's a time when X-Men took over the base of the of the enemies. From the rivers. Here we have the debut of Jubilation Lee, that later on will be Jubilee. Ladies have girls out tonight. And unfortunately someone called the end squad to take down Jubilee. I love this, those simple stories when X-Men, X-Women have a typical day, they go to buy the dress, parties, storm dancing. It's really enjoyable to read that type of stories, but all of them are connected. As you can see, late coming back of the boys from Boys Night, Logan kissing Storm. This is the annual, and then we jump to the, let's say, almost final stage of the banding of the team. Master Mord, Nimrod, Siege Paradis. It all starts to fall down. Taylor have a visions when taking them when taking the cigarettes with her. The first one will be Roche in the with the mind of Carol Danvers. As she takes out 
Master Mode Demon Mode with herself for Sega Perius. Later on, of course, Nimrod Master Mode will become Bastion when they come back. Here is the sacrifice moment. Then those crazy villains of X-Men come. They take out, and of course, Zivers preparing to attack, to take the base off and kill the X-Men. Nanny and Farmaker, they are all here to help X-Men. Whole team thinks that Storm is dead, but that is life model decoy. Hawk is, well, you can see how they are going down, step by step. Hawk thinks he is, here because of him, Storm died. We are stepping into one of my favorite six stories here, that is Polaris and Kavar and someone say the sister of Polaris, that is Zaladan. Not everyone likes this period, but for me it's the story that gives you the view of who the X-Men are. Wolverine, beautiful story of his mind, while X-Men going through Siege Perius because of Psylocke influence on them, so they can have a fresh start before Rivers came to kill them, and Psylocke is start speaking to enemy Donald Pierce, but Wolverine is still the captive of them. He is saved by Jubilee that was hiding in their base, so all is going well. Then we enter the Muir Island saga and the coming back of Storm. So it was good plan by Claremont. We have confrontation of Forge and Shadow King, so it's really preparing to all out war that will be in the second omnibus. This is not a strong guy, I will tell you. It's one of the Morlocks that was hiding. As you can see, here is here. Legion and his fractured mind. And the death of destiny. It's a really emotional, great story. X-Men against enemies, so. and of course we have Lady Mandarin coming back of Betsy Braddock that was found with no memories and her mind was very fractured thanks to Logan and Jubilee she was saved. Great art for sure here. I love Silo in her costume, so it's pure joy for me to read this again. Coming back of Daisler. In the meantime, magistrates from Genosha on US soil. A dramatic CEO fan of Daisler when he realized that she is back. Her punishment to him in some way. Sometimes I think it's a crazy story here. But okay, I get why it was where it was going leading to <laughs> with Maska. Forge and his powers slowly. His memories of what he has done, 
as you remember from Fall of the Mutants. Again, Magistrates, this time with X Factor. And then we came to Coming of Gambit, Uncanny X-Men 266. And of course, Nanny and Farmaker still handing down. And Mystic preparing his her revenge. And last, a long last storm is coming back to her mind, who she is, with her powers. So. Let's see this. Here, yeah, I love this. This great art. And then we have the meeting between Wolverine, Captain America, Black Widow, and of course Nazis needs to be there. And it ends with coming back of Roche. And separately, Miss Marvel. She lands in her Avengers Outback. She even visits Wurilan Saga. And is haunted by Miss Marvel. Shadow King is playing a long game on Wayland Saga, but Roche is saved by Magneto. She declares that he chose, I chose you, so Roche is herself again. Have bonus stories. For some reasons in this new edition this is uh, put here when what is next story is Extension Agenda it should be at the end it's like in the first omnibus it should be around here but okay Covers by Jim Lee Punisher Wolverine African okay. A lot of Bonus stuff, as you can see. Sketches. Xavier walking again. Gambit. Different sketch, different costumes. Psylocke. Beautiful cover. Poster. Interview with Jim Lee. Over again, new version of them of the poster you see previously, and second version of the cover for this omnibus. That was on the first edition as well. So, is this fun story for me? Yeah, because I love X Men. I know how much pain they were influenced with during Inferno. So this Australian Outback time for them was very traumatic, but good solid story with great art in most cases. So for me, something that my friends did great job finding this to me, to have it in newer version and I'm very glad to have that kind of friends.